when France fell by Michael Niebuhr, about when the fall of France in the American reaction and our dealing with Vichy until about mm -hmm. we invaded North Africa. Thank you. Paul? Thank you. Travis? Hey, Travis Glory, present here. Uh, right now, I am currently reading, I don't know if this is working, it's called The President and the Freedom Fighter. It's uh, it's about Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass and their battle to save America's soul. So I picked it up at Costco the other day. Yeah, my current library with its nuts and things. Nancy. Hi, um, I just finished Daughters of Yalta about the backstory of Anna um, Roosevelt, uh, Kathleen Harriman, and um, Sarah Churchill at the Yalta Conference. Excellent book. We have quite a broad range to send, Barb. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to pronounce this well, the author, but I'm reading The Shadow King. It's about the war in Ethiopia. Um, uh, during It was about during World War II when the Italians um, um, invaded Ethiopia. Um, it's Maza Mengisti, I think. Mengiste, I don't know um, where the name comes from, but it's called the Shadow King. Very interesting. Thanks. Alice, do I see Alice? Nope. Maybe she's on her uh, duck. I'm here, um, and this is going to be a little out of line with uh, all the uh, literature that you're reading. But what I've read recently that's is sticking in my mind is the ADN article by Emily uh, Budi Kuntz on February 10th. And in the title, it says, Library draws scrutiny over board decision of quote unquote inappropriate material. And I'm a little incensed and, and wondering why we're attacking our underage board member um, in the local newspaper and with our assembly. So we're going to have some discussions. Um, Within the board, that, I, I would invite those to remain in the board and, and, and have those discussions here before we, I don't know, share these, these thoughts or ideas that we're having in the executive board with the media and with our sitting assembly members. Can I? Can it, I it seems inappropriate to me. Can I? That's my opinion. Can I clarify what what happened, please? We had an assembly member ask for public information and for uh, to be posted about the recordings of the library advisory board meetings. So we made all of those recordings available through the library website. Judy sent out a memo, I believe, uh, that was explaining that she was posting them to the library's website. The reporter watched the video and then wrote the article. Well, there were several inaccuracies in there. My and, and naming Benali, um, who's 17 years old, um, you know, I spent my entire career protecting children and advocating for them and i have to tell you that sits that sits poorly with me and that's I just pretty upsetting and then i'm also reading about the violence that just occurred in the library and that's also upsetting to me so i think this board has um some 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 good work and some tough work to do here in the future and i'm looking forward to that thank you Doug. I'm also here and I'm reading a book called The Feather Thief. Feather Thief, it's hard. Feather, what? I know it's hard. The Feather Thief. Oh, Thief. The thief okay. of Feathers. When I, when I mm. asked Tidal Wave if they had it, it took me about 14 iterations of saying that for them to get it. It's really a fascinating book. It's about, its subtitle is the something something greatest natural history heist in the history of the British Natural History Library. Somebody went in and stole hundreds and hundreds of feathers. So, the feathers. Mm. So, I'm only a third of the way through, so I can't tell you. Yelly. Um, I just started Illusion by Frank Peretti, and I'm not very far into it yet, but so far what's happened is this lady and her husband got in a car accident. And in his timeline, she's died, but she's found herself thrown into different times that she can travel throughout. So it's pretty fascinating. Sounds great, thanks. So this evening, we would like to acknowledge that we gather on the traditional lands of the Dena'ina Athabascan people 
More than a thousand years, the Dena'ina people have been and continue to be stewards of this land. So it's with gratefulness and respect that we recognize the contributions, innovations, and contemporary perspectives of the Upper Cook Inlet Denali people. I did it again. Denali people. <laughs> we respect you too. <laughs> um, so we did the roll call and the check in already. We've all received uh, a couple of operations of the uh, agenda. Most Can we have a copy of the agenda. We have a no, I'm supposed to print it. Okay. I printed it. Okay. I just didn't bring it. <laughs> Actually, so. Jacob, if next time if you can't pick up hard copy, it's not just next time. Not everybody has a printer at home. So. Actually, I hear from my children that nobody prints things any finer than my dad. Seriously? Seriously. I'm old school. I did not know that. I said, yeah. you know, why do you need that? Oh, okay. Just laying on my desk. Can I ask if, because I would love to see a copy of the agenda. I, I mean, I'm just a member of the public, and I, is it possible? If there's a, I do have my I, I have one on my desk. I'll go, I'll go. Thank you, Jacob. Okay. Thanks, Jacob. Um, so, those of us who can see it, is it okay with everybody? Does anybody have any kind of protection? No. Hearing none, can I hear a motion? To approve? No, yes. I move that the agenda be accepted as written. Is there a second? I haven't eaten all day. Thank you. Uh, I see you, Nancy, but for those um, online, could you speak because it's kind of grayed out? I also raised my hand, but it was not um, acknowledged, so I will second. This is Nancy. I know I, I saw your hand, but it's hard to hear. Got it's it. Hard to see. Thank you. Jen is approved. Um, this looks, is that, can people see it? It's easier to see them on the screen if we'd like Actually, them. that's can a all see. That's a I can see them better now. Yeah. Now I can see them, and I can see can't see them with that glare. They probably can't see us, though, in the dark. No, we can't hear you. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. They don't want to see us. It's okay. I'm kidding. It's really, all right. really. Okay, as far as I know, we don't have anybody who registered online to be heard. It looks like we do have some speakers, though, so, and, and some online. So, can I get a feel for, or do, do you, would you like to be a person to be heard? Yes. And you, sir? Thank you, sir. No, thank you, ma'am. And what's your name, sir? My name is Karen. Karen Button. Uh -huh. And, um, See some people online. Do the people who are not board members online wish to be heard? Oh, she's muted and doesn't realize it. Barb is. Barb, are you speaking? Sorry, to you? Sorry to interrupt, Misty. Uh, Alice just texted me and said she's going to be a little late. Thank you. She's showing up right here. So. Okay, thanks. Um, is if one of the two people is uh, Sarah, who's going to be doing our mission. Mode. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Anybody else? Uh, could you name yourself so I could know who's there? Do you mean us? <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah Prescott. I'm the Alaska Collection Librarian. Thanks, Sarah. I'll just assume that the others are just here to listen. Um, so, um, sorry, was it Karen? But uh -huh. it is the time you stand up and here's you have five minutes. Okay, great. Um, I came tonight because I have been uh, paying a lot of attention to um, the number of the library director and, you know, where the direction that the library has been going and I'm um, not happy with what I've been hearing about the potential of selling rare books and artwork. Also not happy with any censorship um, of materials that has that I have also been hearing about. And I don't know where all of that stands, but I understood that that might have been on the evening. Um, and that's why I'm here. I've never come to a library board meeting before. <laughs> I've never really felt the need 
Um, but the library is a place that has great meaning for me. And I really grew up, I grew up in Anchorage mostly, um, but I also grew up in Delta Junction and Juneau. And the library was always a very important part of my childhood. Um, we didn't have a lot of money and my mother was a single mom and she brought us to the library for education, for entertainment, for story hour. It's where I learned about other cultures. Um, it's where I learned, um, you know, to, to find the answers to questions as a young person. Um, and I really value the diversity of a library. I mean, that serves the community best. And so that's that's the gist of my. Thank you for coming. I'd say. Yeah. May I respond to that? Sure. I'm Judy uh, Ellis, the deputy director at the moment, and. Uh, it's really sad when people, um, I, I, I'm going to have to put my name out there for people to call and ask me. I've had had some people call and ask me the exact same things that you're asking. I'm, uh, you're asking, I'm not sure where you're getting the information because it's most certainly not true. And um, I think a lot of it came from a blog that um, likes to make hits on certain people in the library, most certainly me. And um, I, we did do some appraisal of some art that needed to be appraised most certainly have never considered selling any of our art. The only thing, and I actually had a discussion with Mary Rasmussen this week, and Sarah can tell you that there are a lot of things that the friend zone, like uh, there's like a, a bunch of uh, copies, prints that have been around for many, many years, and they're stacked up in this fourth floor room. And oftentimes they do, um, they do sell things like if their books sell and stuff like that. But first of all, I would have no authority to sell anything. I do think that there have been some art sales in the past at the library. Uh, and I think Sarah could verify that we have been down in the vault where things are. And there's a lot of things down there, like there's a Tom Fink day at Disneyland that we suggested perhaps we call his family now that he's passed away and see if he would like to have that. It's of no monetary value. Uh, but in no way, shape, or form have I ever um, ever stated uh, that anything would ever be sold from this library. I wouldn't have the authority even if it happened. And uh, number two, um, I have never banned a book. I have not taken a book off the shelf. And I think the people here at the library, if you ask them point blank, are they aware of me doing that, they would have to say no. So uh, that is uh, that is the truth. Um, and there's nothing, I don't think anyone can say anything else that would be different. And I'm just sorry that that information is out there because it's not coming from a reliable source. And um, so I just need to say that that's not true. Uh, and like I said, we would never, ever sell it. I wouldn't have the authority to sell anything. But I did want some of uh, the art that we did have appraised has been there for many, many years. And it was over $450,000. And my goal is to find out what a value we have in this library so it can be appraised. And we know of what value it is because we didn't actually have any insurance, individual insurance on it. So that, you know, I'm sorry you heard that. Um, I'll be glad to give you my number anytime you have any questions about that again, please call me because I usually can talk to people and say, well, that's not true and it's not happening, but that's so I'm glad you came tonight so you'll know that that's not true. If I can add, please, Doug Wyman. That Allie and I are keen liaison um, discussed, yeah, she's, she's a remarkable young lady. We discussed literature in the library that it was in an appropriate place in the library. No decisions were made. No hard recommendations were made. At no point did anybody mention banning books. Just all over, you know, you know, our, our local media, but just it's horrible. I mean, so that didn't happen. It didn't happen. The discussion did happen, and her presentation can be found on YouTube, and it's worth watching. And in fact, I am going to do what I could do to get that out to circles and in, in, in my sphere. I'm an I'm a elementary uh, educator here in Anchorage. But but I will state that I have I as a library <laughs> person in charge at the moment. I don't know what you call my job from one time to the next, but anyway, I will tell you that when I do get a complaint on a book, I do pull it off the shelf and I look at that book and I read it. I'm a retired educator of many years. Some of the stuff that people complain about, I've heard on a playground. So, but my point is that I'm, I should look at that and see, and I have told everyone we have a policy 
if you uh, do not like a book and you have opposition, uh, I've told everybody that has called me, including people that I know and I like that are that would think maybe more like I did than others, that we have a process and you must go through that process. We have a policy that's laid out. You must go online. You must fill out a form. If you're not online, I have a form that I could give you. You fill that out and we have a process that goes through the whole system. Now, it may eventually come back to me, but that there is a process. And that's what I tell everyone if they have any objections to a book. And, and in actuality, um, as far as Denali's presentation, she uh, asked to move books, but she she actually made the statement that she was against um, a suggestion, but she didn't she didn't say, I want those books removed from the library. I don't think anyone will hear that. Judy, we this is really time wasting. Okay, well that's fine. But I, you know, I just think somebody needs to answer. And voicing your concerns, I would also recommend um, if you were to watch the presentation, also watch the discussion that occurred afterward, because there were some things that um, I was open to hearing that some of my fellow members suggested, and I agreed with. And then also watch the beginning of the January minutes, because there was um, some clarity that happened there as well. So if you want to get a full picture without any media like tinge on it, I'd recommend watching the presentation and discussions and to get a full picture. Okay, thank you. And if I could quickly, please. I've been really quiet this whole time that we that I've been on the board. So I'll, I'll make this quick. I would invite you to maybe um, be part of our selection committee for new literature. As it sits right now, we just have a team of librarians picking literature from the library. It would be nice to have members of the community on that. That would be a not a decision I can make unilaterally, but that's a discussion we're going to have with the board down the road here. But, you know, I'm hearing your history with the library. I, I, would, I would love to work with the community and, and have your input. But no book banning. I just can't say that enough. Nobody mentioned that in this room, ever. I just want to clarify that my information, I mean, I have read some news articles in the ADN, but mostly, I mean, I, I, go, I go to a lot of assembly meetings, and that's where the majority of my information has come from. Mm -hmm stuff that's happened with the assembly chambers and discussions there. So yeah. um, just to clarify that. Yeah. I really thank you for coming. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you, you for coming. Yeah, thank we appreciate you. it. Okay, so um so this uh the YouTube video that you're talking about, you're gonna post that on the it's, it's on the website. If you go to the library website and then you click like the more options tab, mm -hmm. it's a drop down and you'll see library advisory board. Yeah. And you click that and from there you can watch the December and January okay. Very good. Yeah. Good. Well, this is this has been a comfort. Thank you, and I'm I'm glad to know that there's a parking bus, but I wasn't aware of it. So drive very right. safely. Please. I will. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, oh, people of minutes. Speaking of minutes, um, does everybody have a chance to look over the minutes from the January Can meeting? I? Sure. Thank you. And people who believe in printers, I guess. <laughs> is Alice here? Mm -hmm. Oh, there she is. Okay, that's why they recognize her face. Okay. Oh, okay. Is that Alice in, under the A? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I didn't see her face, so that's why I didn't recognize her. So. I'm here. I know. Now we know we figured out A was for Alice. <laughs> Travis, I just sent you these, by the way. Yeah, I've got them pulled up on my computer here. Thank you. That's why you're looking so intently into the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to make a motion? Ready? No, voting number so. Money. Did somebody make a motion? I can't. Okay. I think make a motion. Accept the make minutes. motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Uh, I'll second the motion. Who is it? Who seconded? Depra. Dennis. Sorry, I didn't hear the first. 
Who um, made that Barb Jacobs. Uh, Thanks, Barb. Uh, made a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. All, all in favor of that, say aye, please. Aye. 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 <laughs> Madam President, I just have a question about the minutes. Uh, just might be easier. Uh, if, tra if could those minutes be sent out right after the meeting while it's fresh on our minds and then ask for any edits and then so that we're ready to go? Uh, can that not be done? I mean, I know we've done it other organizations, but I mean, if the minutes were sent out and we could read over them, even if we waited till the next time, we'd be fresh in our minds that we could make those edit edits for the next time. If waiting till the next meeting sometimes makes it a little tough. Yeah. I, I have trouble remembering them. Yeah, I do too. So, so I, actually, I was about to, I was going to have a chat with Travis to suggest that he get them to me very <coughs> soon after yeah. the meeting, and then I can do whatever edits I want to right. do, and we can send them out through Jacob. Yeah, so if that's possible, like within a week, then we can speak. About. Absolutely, I'll get that. It's either to you tonight or tomorrow by t before tomorrow afternoon. How about that? Ooh. Even better. Oh, that's um, really better. <laughs> that's really good, Jacob. Okay, thank you. Jacob uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have a member of the public who apparently couldn't get in on Teams. Is that true? Yes, yes. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Would have uh, joined in on time. Uh, maybe the issue is just ours, but both my wife and I tried to access via the Teams link and the uh -huh. phone uh, number and conference code that were posted on the left website and were unable to do so. Okay. Did, did you wish to be heard? Uh, I'll listen in if there's an opportunity for comment at the end. My understanding from the agenda is you typically take public comment at the start of the meeting, which yeah. I'll probably be missed. Okay. So, okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, director's report. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, uh, we sent out a director's report to everyone, and I'm not going to go over that again. I just uh, did a couple of things that I did want to state that has come up. Um, Number one, uh, the downtown library is moving at a fast rate of speed. I don't know how many of you know about Blythe Marston, but she's the engine behind that. And so uh, they were going, they're going, there's going to be a committee formed and they're actually going to work on that. Roaster Jalewski is going to be on that committee and others. And uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the foundation wrote a resolution in support of the downtown library being at the uh, at the old city hall, and um, uh, they're uh, they're also talking about uh, we have enough money, almost enough money, to uh, do operational for hundred years out. That's what the bank requires from the donation, the six million dollars we got in two thousand. Is it ten? Is it ten years? Well, he's been telling everybody hundreds of years. <laughs> okay. Well, and I was going to say, well, none of us are going to be That's around a hundred. Yeah, I thought so. I thought. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I, thought so. But, so yeah, I, didn't, trust, I didn't think so, but that's what I said. Trust requires that a downtown library be established and maintained for ten years, or we have to pay back the money to the trust. So that's why they have to meet that. He told us Key Bank told him okay. that they would not allow us to have access to the money unless we had the operations out 100 years. And I don't. That's what he wrote told us. So if that's so, maybe you need to talk to him I because yeah. I do too because that sounded like that sounded like a long time. But anyway, it's going it's going very nicely. I think they're going to try. That does not include the actual renovations that will have to be. And I think there is a group they're trying to get to actually ask um, uh, the legislature for like uh, 2.3 million dollars that they feel would renovate what needed to be renovated. Uh, and uh, if uh, if the library advisory board, I don't know if they do things like that with a nonprofit, if they ever do a letter of support. I think they would appreciate that. I talked to Blythe today just in the support of that library being downtown in the old city hall and us, um, you know, going forward with it. And so that's pretty exciting uh, about that. Um, most of you are aware of the fountain outside that has not worked for some time. Um, and um, the uh, and Chris Warren, whose mother-in-law, I think it was, that made the donation of that. Uh, it works in the summertime, but in the wintertime, the lights are supposed to light up the the uh, fountain, and it hasn't been working. One of the problems, what we heard uh, from maintenance, was that people like to go in and they the the colored lights are very expensive, and they take them and actually resell them. And so we are looking at. Um, 
uh, they are looking at, we've, uh, AWWU has um, said that they would help us with that. And we're in the process, Brendan Farrell, who is our uh, facilities um, manager, he is working with them to come up with the plan, what it would actually cost and, um, and present it because um, the foundation would like to look at perhaps in, in funding how that is, um, it could be uh, up and running because it's going to cost quite a bit of money. The problem is that our biggest concern is this is going to happen every few years. It's very expensive to maintain. So I do believe that they are looking and I ask them to look at uh, some type of barrier that would keep people from crawling because they actually crawl over in it and get the lights and things. So um, that's another project that's kind of been on the back burner and we're really get, glad that that is, that is going forward. So um, those two things, it's been a, a busy two weeks at the, at the library. Um, Laura Baldwin, who has been here for a long time, uh, went to Hawaii and and I think she decided she liked the sunshine. She has resigned. Um, I spoke with her yesterday. She's really good spirits. And uh, so um, she's been here 14 years and uh, knows a lot. So uh, that will be a, a huge loss to the library, but I wish her the best of luck. And um, other than that, I'm just going to let you read the report. If you have any questions about the report, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, balls in the uh, air at the moment. Uh, the first and foremost is the safety of uh, has been uh, for me is the safety uh, of both our uh, employees and our patrons. Um, we had been working on something before a review of uh, uh, about the violence videos. The municipality has municipality has all of that, but it all needed to be updated. And we just so happened to be working on it when we had the incident uh, at the on Sunday at the library. So we will be requiring all of the um, the staff to look at that and we will be having uh, meetings concerning that. So that's just something we had in the works and sorry to say it was something we were hoping we would never have to use, but we will. So those are three things right now that just seem to be front and center and take most of my time. So I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Nancy has her hand up. Na yes. Yes, Nancy. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, to uh, come in with a question to your very first point, could you just clarify what you mean by Old City Hall for those of us who may not know? Oh, what I'm building sorry. You're about? That is the low. You know where the uh, log cabin is now on the Fourth Avenue and uh, up right behind the um, right. Egan Center. That Old City Hall is that building. You probably wouldn't notice it unless you you actually looked for it. It's a beautiful architectural front. And it's uh, right there where they have a lot of the plays and the music in sure. the summertime. That, in front of that it's right yeah. there, right. I'm familiar with it. It's where Visit Anchorage is, um, is yes. currently housed. I just yes. wasn't sure that others who may not be as familiar with Anchorage would know where right, that is. Right, I apologize. I yeah, and, and um, they will be negotiating. Uh, there's quite a bit of room there. I don't know uh, whether, um, you know, um, They'll be negotiating with visiting Alaska. I don't, I don't want to happen at that point. That's just too far out to even discuss. But uh, but yes, it's a beautiful old building if you've not heard it. And it has withstood the 1964 earthquake and many more. So it's a pretty it's pretty safe building. So anyway, lots of issues could be a historical building. Uh, all the things that you get into when you try to do something like that to an older building. But I think I've got a great group of people that have come together that they're movers and shakers and they will get it done. And that's what we needed. So I had a couple. Could you tell me what WWU is? Oh, that's the Anchorage Wastewater and Water Utility. They have been, they have, uh, they do the water part of the fountain and clean it, you know, and fix it and stuff like that. And they actually have engineers and they also gave us the names of some people, some organizations where we can get a lot of this, we can get all this, all of this, um, what needs to be done, done at no cost to us or very little, where if we had to hire it out, we're talking about quite a bit of money. And so they are working with uh, with uh, us and Brendan is the lead on that because he's the facility person. And so he's got a, um, uh, they're supposed to get back with the bid and then we will notify um, uh, the foundation. Uh, I think it's probably gonna be more costly than we realize, but 
So we're trying to just figure out how can we do this and not have it happen again in two or three years. I guess there's been, a, from what I heard from AWW, there's this has been an ongoing problem for many, many years, keeping it up. It's beautiful when it's up and running, but it's the kind of thing in Alaska that's hard to keep up and running. So. About that, in Alaska especially. Now, one other thing that wasn't in your report, but um, I got in some inquiries by community members about um, what they feel is a lot of... Uh, empty positions in the library, you know, mm -hmm. branches and libraries. And, and I don't know how to respond to that, but I'm wondering, like, who is there, uh, which are our department for the library or for the municipality? That it's, it's the municipal, yeah. Monthly reports or something so we could yes, we, test what the problem is. Yes, we do have that. Uh, we have open positions, but uh, I, uh, most of you may know Cheryl Frasca, mm -hmm. um, Jacob and I have been working on those, and we do have some things written up. We may not get all of them, but we're going to try to get several of them. And so we're in the process of doing that and working with HR right now on that. So things written up is some kind of... Well, there's a, a justification. We have to... There's a hit fire, hit hiring freeze on, so we have to justify it. And Jacob is very good with those justification words. And so we write it up, and we ask for that position... We just got a position in the technical services that were hired. We just got a position at uh, um, patron, service. patron services. We just got another one at Eagle River, even though one that was a uh, promotion, so we still have an opening. So uh, we're doing the best we can. Um, they're tightening up on, I think, um, not knowing what the projected revenue is for this year. And so, uh, but we are working on it. You know that. Pardon? Yes, there's been a hiring freeze on since the mayor took office. Yes. I see. Okay, that's fine. So, um, okay, that, so that's where we are on that. Like I said, we're looking at it. Jacob and I are working together on that, which, you know, um, we get in there with our chalkboards, you know, which ones can we do? What's, what's are the ones? And to me, the most important ones are the people, the positions that work with the patrons, like the patron services or the back end technology. Boy, they handle a lot of stuff, and when they're down one person, it makes a big difference. Some other department could be down one, but it's not something that is is drastic. In other words, it could be something we just didn't do that that day or something like that. So, but we are working that right now. Okay. We probably are not going to get all of the positions. We're hoping to get a few. It would be good to see a report on that so that we'd have something to uh, maybe by next month. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I you know I don't know. Um, HR director, do I do we have a report? I mean, I know that we have uh, I open positions. Some of the fit positions people have left, and we've just not filled them. Yeah. The, so yeah. I just I can't. Yeah, but well, that we're, yeah, like I said, there um, there's going to be cuts, and we know that. So we're we're very hesitant to give a job unless we absolutely know it's going to stay. But we'll look forward to okay. more about that. Um, yes. Any other? Comments or questions? Right. Um, yeah, uh, let me lower my hand. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, now. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to do the toggle. Uh, thank you very much for the director's report. Um, I Just to um, segue with what um, Christy just asked you, how many positions are now open at the library? I think we have eight or nine that are well, and, and I don't know if that counts the ones that we just hired because we've just put on three positions. So I, I can't, but it's pretty, uh, and we've, we're asking for um, trying to fill at least three or four more right now. And so we're trying to get that done, but all I can do is ask. Okay. And, and what's our total staff? Uh, 90, let's see, there's, is it 85? It's either, uh, Jacob, I think it is um, 83 staff members, I believe, and that's system-wide. I had heard at one time it was 95, but I think it's not 95, but I'll ask Jacob when he comes in. I've heard, uh, it kind of changes from time to time. Um, yeah, so anything talking. we can do to help is, I think, where this yeah. conversation Well, I don't think, there, yeah, that's, I mean, uh, th that's the mayor's decision, and how many do we have uh, staff now? Not, I mean, positions are at, No, just how many positions do we have? Is, is it 95 or 85? Just positions total in the system. Uh, we have 78 FTE. Okay. 
okay. um, full time equivalent. And that works out to somewhere around 98 positions. But, you know, then you have part time and full time. Right now we have nine open positions. Nine. Um, okay. That works out to um, about seven FTE because several of those are part time of some sort. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the other question I have, I don't know if Travis caught this. I certainly didn't catch it, but there's a little delay in um, lag time with the speech. Um, when you were talking about the incident that happened at the library, um, you were saying that your the employees were watching a violence. I didn't quite get, what, is there a film oh, on? Said, no, no, we have training. It's the municipalities training. It's safety training. Brendan uh, Farrell is our safety the officer here and so he works with the municipality there's a whole department that does that it's something okay. that we regularly look at it it needed it hadn't been updated not done so we we started down the path to be sure that uh we got what we needed to offer all of our people and that's before any of this happened so that will be and that will all be online so okay. it's, it's the escalation training and right. how to deal with workplace violence okay. um Unfortunately, what occurred, there was nothing that we could have done um, yeah. in that instance, but um, we do have from time to time different violent incidents that take place. And we had one that happened previously last week on the third floor and uh, an employee was knocked down. And so we just wanted to make sure that people knew you know, how to handle someone who's acting agitated and um, upset so that they don't, you know, get in their way or, you know, get too close to them, you know, the different things that they try to teach when you're doing de-escalation. So that's what she, she was trying to explain. Great. And then my last question really quickly is, I'm just curious, um, being on the south side here, about the diamond kiosk and how it's doing. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't know if Jacob told everyone or everybody knows. So unfortunately, the the company that does um, all of our automation for self checkout and the machine at the Diamond Center, um, they only have one company that handles like the Pacific Northwest, so Idaho, Montana, you know, Washington, and they yeah. have to fly someone out to Alaska whenever we have an issue, and that person um, had come out right before. Um, the incident occurred, but uh, a gentleman pulled the machine down on the ground. It messed up, bent one of the doors. Um, the uh, facilities has bolted the machine to the wall now. Um, they didn't think it was going to be necessary because it was so tight in the casing that surrounds it in the Diamond, Diamond Transit Center. But this person was determined for whatever reason um, to pull it down. So we think that it won't, shouldn't occur in the future, but we're waiting on parts and we're waiting on the, the gentleman to fly back out here to fix the machine. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Yes. I have, a, I guess I have a question or maybe comment or, or maybe something we could put in this report. Um, is there a, a circulation report per library per month we could see like how many books were checked out, how many videos or anything like that? Do we, we keep statistics? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, okay. we can give you a breakdown if you want. Um, I mean, something general like well, every- We can give report. the last one we had. Uh, yeah. We, yeah, we can give you the last one we have. And Because um, I know there was recently one updated. We generally, we have what's called a, a performance values report. Okay. It's available on the Muni website. Okay. Um, every department has to do their measures, and we do ours is that what you, on is a weekly basis. basis. Yeah. Publish it. Okay. Um, but we can include a copy of that PVR with the board report each okay. quarter. If you'd like it. And, the and, quarter at the quarterly meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good well, idea. Thank yeah, you. that would be. And then um, the other thing, I guess, because of what happened in previous incidents, they don't have to give names, but maybe every report, if there's been. A safety concern, whether it's crime, an assault, or a, someone displaying himself in front of God and country in an inappropriate manner, something like that. So at least we we know something. Before, we have some idea. I, I I have done. There is a presentation that I did for an assembly member uh, that I I could do or I could send you. We have a uh, I I asked him, and it was only for the last four months since I had been here how many incidents that we had had in yep. those four months. And uh, before that, we have big three 
green big binders, white binders. Mm -hmm. And they used to just, they would write the incident report, take the mm -hmm. picture and as large, but now we have started, um, our security person uh, has, uh, could not, wasn't that well on the computer, good on the computer. Yes. So Brendan, we are, we have started adding each one of those on exactly what they're for. We have pie graphs. If you guys would like to have that presentation next time, I'm most certainly- I, I, I just like every, get these reports every, every month. If there's like some sub paragraph, hey, we had three, four incidents, something like that. And the other thing I was gonna, I was like, we meet here all the time or every month, and that's great. Can you ever meet at one of the branch libraries, or is that? We have done. Uh, okay, that's a good idea. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, I mean get to, we meet at least this, 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 the this is maybe the crown jewel, but it's a, Anchorage is a very big town. Mm -hmm. Maybe even some neighborhood engagement with people there. I'd like to see the other libraries. Yeah. It's, it's fun when we go to the other Yeah, and yeah, we could do that. I think probably we haven't in the last two years because of the uh, yeah, the great panic and everything. The, the biggest issue that we have there is all of our branch libraries close at six o'clock. Oh, okay. And they're only open Tuesday through Saturday. Gotcha. So that would be, but I, it, it may be, you know, you wouldn't get to see any patrons there mm -hmm. unless we did it, you know, at a different time. But that that would be an issue. But it doesn't mean we couldn't visit there maybe earlier. Anybody that wanted to do a tour, and I'd then something that. like yeah, that, you know, have to see the, the other libraries. Yeah. Somewhere. Okay. Well, I'll talk to them. We've done it at this time in the other branches. Um, yeah, I mean, you can always walk through the library before the meeting right. or, or right. at the beginning right. of the meeting and then no, have a meeting in a community right. room or whatever. Yeah, cool. I'm going to ask if we have any volunteers for that. No, I mean, I mean, we can just, we can just, um, let them know we're going to set it up. We usually, you know, we always start with Eagle River and then work our way down, but um, okay. however you want. That's fine. That's about. fine. Yeah. Well, Road trip. There we go. Yeah, work road trip. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it and see which ones some. Okay, so may, I, may I know that we're talking about the Alaska collection at some point. So mm -hmm. I don't know if this is already. But no. are we continuing the? Uh, so you started. What did you start? Somebody's coming over, Crazy. cataloging it. No, no, no. I had an appraiser just pray. That Sarah's going to be her presentation okay. today. So I'll just wait. I was just curious. Yes, wait until her presentation. It. Okay, sounds good. Any other questions, comments for the director's report? Thanks. Great, great suggestions. Um, Sarah, I believe you are on. Okay, am I up? I'm going to yep. attempt to share my screen. Bear with me just a moment. Oh, we're there already. Oh, my, we did move along fast. Just we we're on time. Yeah, we're on time. We're there. <laughs> we're there. We're there. Surprise. I run a tight shift. <laughs> yes, you do, man. Somebody's got <laughs> friends. Friends, not so much. <laughs> friends, not so much. They like. They like to visit. I love them to death. I've got old friends on there too, so we visit a little too much. That's <laughs> Hi, Sarah. So good to see you. You too. Hello, everyone. Hello. Okay. Oh, Can folks see my screen? Yep. Is anything moving on your screen? Yeah, yes. moving around. Like like You're probably seeing it. Okay. Let me see the Alaska collection. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So I haven't done it um, on Teams before, so might just take a little bit of getting used to it myself. Um, so yeah. Thank you for this opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, my name is Sarah Prescott. I'm the Alaska Collection Librarian at Anchorage Public Library. Um, apologies, I wasn't able to make it last month, uh, but just a little bit of background on myself. I am from Anchorage. I came up through the Anchorage School District and graduated uh, from UAA. Uh, I went out to get uh, my master's degree in history and library science. I was thrilled to be able to come back home and serve my community in adult services here at uh, Anchorage Public Library. I started here at LUSAC in 2013, and I have been the Alaska Collection Librarian since um, since 2019. I started in April. Um, so I'm basically going to go over um, a couple different parts about the Alaska Collection, uh, what it is, where it is, some of the changes uh, that we've seen over the past uh, 10, 15 years, 
and uh, what we hope to see for the future. Uh, and I will leave uh, my contact information and time at the end for questions. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, so what is the Alaska Collection? When we talk about the Alaska Collection, um, a lot of folks mean different things. Uh, so technically speaking, what the Alaska Collection is, is a collection of materials. And those materials include uh, popular circulating books. It includes newspapers. It includes uh, rare books. Uh, it includes yearbooks, microfilm, and it's mostly newspapers on those microfilm. Um, it also includes uh, rare books. We're no longer collecting those, but it includes rare books and an archive that was started in the mid 1980s. A uh, brief history on the collection. Apology for the cat if you're hearing that. A uh, brief history on the collection. It started with a big donation uh, from um, Mr. Cuddy in the 1950s, and that was donated to the downtown library. When Lusak Library moved to the building it's in now, as part of that build, they built the Alaska Wing. And so when we talk about the Alaska Collection, that wing is what a lot of folks mean. Um, it, it included an archive, um, it included um, an archivist, and it had a staff of about 12. Um, and Bruce Merrill was, you know, kind of who I think of as, as the father of the Alaska Collection. He built it into a really great gem of a collection uh, that I am, it's in that spirit that I kind of move forward with the work that I do. Um, and that brings us to where is the Alaska Collection? So it is virtually all still here. Um, when we had a flood in 2017, it needed to move because, or the materials, excuse me, needed to move because they needed to redo the carpet in the wing. Uh, so we moved it to just some open shelves that were available and then just other space that we had throughout the building. So the popular and circulating materials, those are all on the third floor. They're kind of back behind uh, the biographies by the study carols on the third floor. Those are still available for checkout. They're available for browsing. Uh, those are accessible during all hours that the library is open. The rare books, the yearbooks, and the microfilm again, which house you know, most of the newspapers, those ended up in an office on the fourth floor. So those are still available upon request. Um, folks just need to ask a reference librarian for help finding the information they're looking for so they can grab the right material out of that office. Um, or if they know exactly what they're looking for, you know, a 1962 article from the Anchorage Times, staff can just run up and grab um, that microfilm. The archive is still with us, though, again, not being collected. Uh, that is in what's called the vault, and that is beneath the Alaska wing, the old Alaska wing. Um, so we have documentation of what's in there. It includes papers. It includes um, the artwork. It includes a little bit of everything um, that is I'll talk about a little bit in just a little bit um, there. We don't collect for that anymore uh, because we just don't have the resources or the capacity. Um, by the vault, there's what's called a storage area. And for right now, that is where we're keeping um, municipal publications. So uh, policy <laughs> and procedure 52.8 outlines that the library should house a permanent reference collection of municipal publications, which is not the same thing as municipal documents. So these publications are things like your land use plans, your neighborhood plans, uh, things that were written with the intention that they would be distributed to the public. Um, so we have a copy of virtually all municipal publications uh, here at the library, and those get requested. Uh, more than I thought they would. Uh, I'm kind of surprised at how often I get requests for land use plans from the 1970s. Uh, so it's really fascinating, and they're very oh, excited um, when we. Planning is zoning, right? Class. Yes. Yeah, planning is zoning. That's why they're asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, planning and zoning and yeah. uh, parks will also ask for old plans a lot as well. Um, so some of the changes we've seen in the last 10 to 15 years, um, it, the 
2008-2009 staff reduction um, that you might have heard about really limited staff's ability to staff the wing all of the hours that the library was open. So starting in 2009, the hours for the Alaska wing were reduced. Um, they they went from 12 to 9 um, Monday through Saturday and 1 to 5 on Sunday. Um, and then shortly thereafter, you know, to kind of cope with how we were going to move forward. And this is shortly before I came on at LUSAC. Uh, they developed a new master plan. They worked for a couple of years getting community input for what would you like to see in a library? Um, how do you use it? Um, you know, what what do you want your library to be? And part of that was that folks really didn't feel like they were allowed to be in the Alaska wing and that's, you know, if they could find it. Um, so what those planners heard really was let's make a space that's more accessible and easier to find. Um, so in 2017, the Anchorage Library Foundation you know, made that a priority to explore options for a new Alaska room. Um, and in December 2017, that happened a little faster than everyone was expecting uh, when a pipe burst in between the second and third floor, um, and we had to move all those materials yeah, out. It. And it was decided um, at that point that the Alaska wing would become the Alaska Event Center. Uh, in order for the library to be able to make some revenue uh, and, and contribute in that way. So we've been moving along for the past couple of years on a new Alaska room um, in order to house the materials that have sort of needed to be housed throughout the building and might be a little bit more difficult to find. So, oops. Um, this is not the current drawing. This is just something that uh, was drawn up in 2019 just to give folks kind of an idea of you know what we're looking at for a new room. Um, this is where the genealogy currently is on the third floor. So if you can see kind of by the curve, there's that big window there. That's not going anywhere because it shows the mountains. It's such a glorious window. Um, they'll be seating in front of that. Um, there's also the idea to have uh, six foot bookcases um, that go around the remainder of the curve. And the idea behind those is uh, that's where we would house the rare books in the yearbooks in um, a closable glass bookcase. Uh, so that way folks could see those rare books, they could browse them. Um, you know, it would just be like the old wing where staff just need to open the door and then they're welcome to look at them right there. Um, and then the shorter shelves, I'm not sure if you can see my little pointer here, um, the shorter <coughs> shelves and then these shelves over here um, those would be where the municipal publications and your popular your popular circulating material would go. So it's all together in one space. And microfilm also isn't going away. Uh, so we've got our microfilm here. Um, and then some microfilm readers are likely to be here or maybe a little closer to um, where the microfilm drawers are. And then we've got some map drawers at well, as well. Um, back over here, we've got some private meeting rooms because we do hear a lot of uh, commentary. How wouldn't it be great if there was just a small room? So the idea was to, uh, yeah, just make up some, some study rooms slash meeting rooms. So that's kind of the idea of how we'd like to bring it all together moving forward. Um, uh, Sarah, I have so, a question. What I have yeah. one question. Uh, my understanding, can you explain, explain uh, genealogy? Is that not all at UAA? What happened there? Because I've heard a couple of different stories. Do we actually have that now or was that not all moved? I was told that a bunch of it was moved to UAA and we were not doing the genealogy anymore. Can you explain that? Sure. So we have a genealogy collection um, and actually I'll bump back. It's, it's actually in this little round space here um, next to the windows, um, mm -hmm. except that the bookcases are perpendicular uh, <clears throat> to the curve. So I believe there are two, maybe three bookcases of genealogy. The vast majority of that was donated by um, the Anchorage Genealogical Society, uh, I believe in the mid aughts. Um, okay. it, it does not get a lot of use um, and what happens to it next, whether we keep it um, or whether it goes back to the Genealogical Society, um, that's a conversation for the collection uh, management coordinator. Uh, 
we do not actively collect genealogical material. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So just in closing for the new room um, or for the future of this collection, excuse me, um, we'd really like to give it its own brand new fresh space where people feel welcome. And part of that is uh, a free engagement with the community. So, you know, I'm working with various groups to see what what kind of programming they'd like to see in there and also what kind of materials. Um, there is a tradition, you know, not everybody can be traditionally published, but that doesn't mean that those are the only voices we should hear, you know, or those who can uh, get with a, a big uh, publishing house and have their works published. So how can we get the voices of our community and those who live in our state? How do we get those to be part of this library? So I'm reaching out to other groups to see what that looks like, as well as uh, making sure that, for example, the Alaska Studies uh, group, or I'm sorry, students, the Alaska Studies students have what they need out of this collection. And if that means I need to purchase some things, great. If that means I just need to do some study guides, I'm on it, but really working with the high schools to figure out how we can better their understanding of Alaska history and culture. Um, and with a third floor move, that means greater access. Um, and on top of that, I'm also moving some of the reference materials to circulating uh, because they aren't rare. And there's no reason that they couldn't go out and go to someone's home. Uh, and just the same continued dedication to Alaskana. It's it's had um, it's kind of taken its lumps over the last 10 to 15 years. And so it's it's my goal to really refresh that in the coming years. So it is an accessible collection that people want to view. They want to check out. And the goal is to be the best Alaska collection in the state. And if you would like updated information, uh, this link here is just where you can find um, updates about the collection itself, what's going on with the room plans. Um, we're hoping some design plans are coming out soon by the end of the month. And of course, here's my contact information at the bottom. Uh, you've got my direct email. Ask a librarian can also answer many questions and my direct phone number. And with that, I'm available for any questions folks might have. Questions, anyone? Thanks, Sarah. That was great. Uh, He's there. Seeing any hands here? Oh, well, I kind of have a question. So, is there any reason to not hang any of the art or anything in the old wing? I mean, if since we have some of that art in the vault. So. The rotunda or the downstairs space? No, the the old, the rotunda. The top part. Yeah. Um, we would just need to do it and make sure that it's hung correctly. That's all, and that would be a facilities, you know, okay. issue. And because and it has now gotten um, valued, right, for insurance no, purposes just, now. Just, no, that's just the gallery. That's oh, just those that are hanging. Yeah, yeah it's already hanging. hanging. Yeah. So, so, there's yeah. other things. That, yeah. Would, we, would we have? Would we have to uh, the stuff that's not hanging, like some of those maps and other stuff? We would have to get that evaluated before we go. I would want to. Okay. And the maps we wouldn't be able to hang. The maps we wouldn't be able to hang until they were put into certain kinds of frames, like archival right. frames mm -hmm. um, right. that may be cost prohibitive. Um, and it would also limit their use as maps. Um, so well, yeah, that's a. Some of the expensive rare maps that are there, I don't think we would probably want people to handle them. You know, the ones that are already framed that are hanging up. Sure. That, yeah, they're already framed. I don't know if it would have to be, um, would have to check that out, but there are some, and then there's some that probably do need to be framed because they're just, they're not being viewed. They're worth they're just, a lot in the bad, yeah. Well, one of the things that, that we thought was so great about the plans for the Alaska room that we were trying to build is that there was going to be a display space where we could swap out things on like a regular basis. Yeah, so that would make sense. That whatever. So they were going to build specific walls 
that would make it easier for us to, to put up these types of frames that are adjustable that they could snap in. And then we would be able to do those types of things. So um, we, it was going to make it more of a display space as well um, with some really cool architectural features to do those types of things. Um, unfortunately, right now the rotunda is locked off um, to the public. So only in certain circumstances would they get to see anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. else? Thanks very much. Uh, that's great. All right. We all Thanks. look forward to. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. So we've got such a sweet smile on her face. She does. So she always um, has a sweet smile. Mm -hmm. Always. We actually are a little um, ahead of our adjournment, and we still have a member of the public. If you would like to have your final call. Oh. I greatly appreciate the opportunity. Great. I don't know that as wisely as I hope to next time. Okay. Given that I was late to the board meeting tonight, <laughs> if I could, what's your name? My name, first name is Jeff. Okay. Last name is spelled R A U N. Say it again. R R A U N. Thank you. Okay. Great. Uh, my spouse actually is on her way as well, but uh, she may be too late. Such as it is. Could somebody please confirm for me what the actual call-in number is? Uh, during the meeting, I asked them okay. to try again multiple okay. times, and were unable to. There's usually several. There was usually, there's usually, a bit, well, that's on Zoom, not Teams. So what's on the Library Advisory Board web page for right. tonight's meeting is 907-519-0237. It's not a, the thing is they're not a static number. It's a number that's assigned when we create the meeting. And what happened was we had a big turnover in the fall of board members. And so the old link and the old number was what was on the website and it needs to be updated. So I, um, I, when I left the room, I fielded several phone calls from people and gave them the correct information. But I will update the link and everything tomorrow um, morning. Okay, and it'll so, be up to date. Uh, obviously it looks like a number of board members are uh, on the call remotely. Yes. So I'm curious as to how you know, they got the accurate call and information, but it wasn't communicated to them. Publicly. Right. So the employee that does the website didn't get the updated information. So the board members did, but not Christy, who does our website. Okay. Would I get, again, humbly request that the minutes yep. reflect yes. the fact that, we'll do that public participation may have been. Yeah, we'll, it'll get up by, yeah, we'll get it up tomorrow. Sorry about that. That was my mistake. That's okay. Lots to remember. Yeah. Keep up with. Well, thank you for everyone's service. Who oh, are thank you for board. coming. It's difficult for me since I came in late to uh, ascertain who's actually on the board versus you know, who's reporting as. What well, do you want to introduce? Uh, let's just introduce everyone to you again. That's the least we could do for you driving all the way down here yeah. in this weather. Well, I appreciate you being here. I'm, I'm Doug Weinman. Doug, as a nice nice board member. Okay. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Dennis Deprom, a board member. Dennis, nice, nice to meet you. Deb Bronson, also board member. Hi, Deb. Uh, Judy Elledge, deputy director. Hi. Denali Chewbacca, team liaison. Nice to meet you, Christy Willard, board member and chair. Could the folks online introduce themselves? To the hey, hey, Jeff, I'm Travis Scalardi here. I'm the secretary. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks for coming in. You as well, Travis. Thank you. I'm Lo Crawford, board member. Hi, Lo. Nice, nice to see your face. Okay. Hi, Jeff. Uvang um, Khanik. My name's Alice Khanik Glenn. I'm a board member. Hi, Alice. Nice to meet you. I'm Nancy Hemsap, board member. Nice Nancy, to meet you. Well. I'm Barb Jacobs, board member, vice Barb, chair. Thank you for your service. Thank uh, you. The, li the library is down. I have is anyone else over there? there? Those are all public okay. people okay. who, who you know, love the opportunities they get to spend here and uh, look forward to continuing to do so. And so as concerned members of the public, I think you'll see us at a few future board me meetings. And to get involved. And please call us at any time if you want to come in, talk to us or anything. Please feel free. I'm, we're on the fourth floor and we can normally be found somewhere. And that's a theme that you'll hear me talk about in the future as well, maintaining this as an open, accessible, inviting space for, for our community. May I ask what else? Who's your, your kids at end? Uh, so we live in Midtown uh, and uh, Rogers Park Elementary. Nice. That's where we have two. And then one is in the HD program at Rum Lake Middle School. Oh, nice. So a little yeah. bit of cross town traffic during the middle. Yeah, very good. Yeah, excellent. 
And this is a study location for our oldest. She's in middle school and study groups are forming. She comes here on the weekends. And it's, like I said, an important space for her. Ro Roaming has a, an amazing group of young, young folks going through there. And some award-winning teachers on that on that team. College with. So yeah. Thanks for connecting on that Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Can we can't really see. I'll turn you and turn the light back on. Does that help you if we turn the light? We can see you, but let me see if that helps. Let me help. Let me see if this does that help you guys. No, no, oh, no, no, no. There we go. Now we're is in the dark. You see us better? better. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So we are now um, 20 minutes in advance of our. <laughs> well, I don't. I'm just playing with the lights. Do any board members have comments? No, great meeting. Hey, Travis, we missed seeing you, bud. Yeah, and sorry, I wasn't, didn't make it in person. I'll make it in person uh, next meeting, I promise. Okay, weather permitting. It's always weather permitting. Um, yeah, Any board absolutely. members online have comments? We didn't What? Weather permitting. I'm not seeing any. Anybody here in the room? If anybody wants to talk to Amy Domboski, she's on the earth. If anybody has a question, oh, she's gonna let me for me. Oh yeah, she, yeah. I'm just gonna get gonna kid you for asking. Is that true? I can't see that. Yes, it is true. You, you see them on the side there. Yeah, I know. I would not lie to you. <laughs> she's she's got it her face true. there, but she's doing it. I guarantee you, her face. Will... We can <laughs> turn the lights back off. <laughs> Any other comments? At all. Thank you so much. Thank Everybody, you. be very safe on your. We will. Thank you very much. It's actually pretty good. It's not. It's not icy. It's pretty slushy out there. Yeah, because it's raining. Yeah. Somebody get oh, yeah. to a turn. Yeah, I just I drove I drove to Glen Allen. To a turn. Thank you, Deb. Forever. 